Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And I'm here with a little bit of a gel plate play video today. As you can see, because I've got my 12x12 gel plate out, I've got my 5x7 gel plate out, got my 4-inch um, speedball brayer, my favourite one. Um, I've got some roll-out paper over there. I've pulled out some cardstock, 12x12. This should tell you everything about it. It's 12x12, 250 grams GSM. Um, so that's what I'm using and I've got a project coming up where I actually need some background papers so I need to make about five or six backgrounds all within the same sort of colour scheme. I'm planning to cover a box for my journal pages. Now if I can, because it's going to be quite a large box, if I can actually video it, I will video it and I will link it to this video and then I will link that video to this video if all that makes sense, because I know that this is going to take me at least an hour and I should imagine the box make probably a little bit more than that, so I can't put them both into one. Right, so I've got my acrylic paints here. I've got some mark making stuff as well. I pulled out a few of my own stencils and masks. I'm going to be using dainty dots, well, possibly using dainty dots. I'm going to use little leaves and I've got a new launch for you, Cascading Cubes. It's something I designed a long time ago and really loved. So we're going to be introducing you to um, cascading cubes as well. As I said, along with some mark making stuff. Now, um, 12 by 12. Now, the colour scheme was actually inspired by um, Darcy at Darcy's uh, Misadventures in Mixed Media. I will put the link to that video in the description box, which is either a grey V or there's a read more on the description. Um, last year, Darcy did a video. It was a colour challenge. I think it was, it might have called, been called something like Spiced Orange or something, and I really like the colour scheme. Um, I was going to try and regenerate what Darcy did. There's just no way that she was using so many different mediums, but I love the look of it. So I'm going to use sort of a lemon orange, maybe slightly terracotta, sand cream, that sort of colour scheme for the whole thing. I need, as I said, six of these to be able to cover the box, which will that tell you how big the box is. So basically I need to hush up and get on with it and I need to start putting colour down from the get-go, make sure this is all working. So I'm going to come in. Um, I've got buttermilk, one of my favourite colours, and I'm going to put some of that. Now I use my 5x7, as you all know, as my palette. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to that before we even get going. I'm so nearly out of this one. I have bought a colour very similar to this. I want to say it's cadmium yellow hue is the colour I've bought. And I'm going to mix in a bit of this orange. Um, by Stamperia. I know that I don't like using it on its own because it dries too quickly, but when it's mixed with other paints, it will be fabulous. So just a little bit of that. I don't want to go orange too quickly. And I'm going to do this for absolutely each of the backgrounds, although each of the backgrounds is going to look ever so marginally different for obvious reasons, because this is art and you can't replicate it identically every time. That's probably why I like doing it, to be honest with you. Now, um, I do have tissue as a cleanup. I've got my brayer off to one side as well. So I'll probably be generating other things as I go along. But it's going to be very much speed making for me today. Because as I said, I need to get all of this done roughly within an hour. I'm going to use my Baron. Um, a Baron is just a tool to actually help me smooth out and press my papers down or card down. I do that because I do a lot of gel plating and rubbing and rubbing means it just dries my hands out. Um, so there you go, that's a good start. Now there's bits down the side, they will get sorted out as we go along. So let's get the next layer of paint on here. Now, um, the Baron was actually hand turned or hand carved by an artist in America called Anthony. Anthony owns um, Cody Woodworking on um, Etsy. He does not only Barons, he does some beautiful works of art as well. So pop over there and check out Cody Woodworking and or Cody Woodcraft, I think it is actually. Um, pop over there, show him some love, have a look at that. Um, if I can, I will try and put um, his details into my description box, but I don't seem to have much luck 
when it comes to copying links from Etsy, but I will do my darndest to at least put his name plus the name of his shop plus any other details I can find for him in there. Great guy, very, very talented. So let's get this down. As I said, this is just, I needed something that gave me a coherent family of backgrounds that will actually then cover my boxes. Sorry, not my boxes, my box. So, and this is just a quick way to stick within, oh, one of those, um, to stick within the same color palette um, is one way to unify it. And then what I'll do is, as I use each of, this is so nearly dead, um, as I use each of the techniques, I'll then repeat that technique on each of the individual pieces. So it's a technique that will just make it all look like one coherent family. And I'm fine about that. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I do like to cover my own boxes um, for my storage here in the craft cave. And that's because I'm proud of my art. And I like to see my art displayed. And I utilise it. And it's one great way of using my gel prints. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Isn't that scary? All of a sudden the mind went bing, blank. So, so yes, I do use my gel prints a lot. There is a video on my top 10 uses for gel prints. If you've already seen that, you know I use them quite regularly. And I do love using them. So, so we're getting really unified stuff. I do have stuff here. I mean, I could come in and pick it up with the excess pieces. But as I said, there's going to be layers and layers. And what I'll do is each time I will make sure that that area is actually touched down. I'm sure it was called Spiced Orange. I'm sure that's what Marcy's was. Um, I have a feeling it was probably a colour combination challenge generated on um, a Facebook group called Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. And that group is originally and still is um, a group that was set up and run on Facebook by PM Artist Studio. And you may have noticed I'm one of their designers, which is why I quote it so often, because I'm part of that group. Uh, myself and Paula in the Netherlands actually now run the colour challenge on there. So, although I do think we need to rethink that name. I, I don't like the word challenge. It's more an exploration of colour. It's more um, a learning curve. It's more colour theory by experimentation. So, there you go, that's another nice one. Right, two more to go. I'm going to be sad when the buttermilk runs out. Um, I've tried and tried to find it. Again, I can find it, but the it's got a huge amount of shipping involved in it, and I don't know what it is. I'm, I don't even know where I picked it up. I've got a feeling... I was doing a TV show. Ooh maybe two years ago it must have been about two years two years ago and the tv show was actually sponsored by Dogecraft, and they supplied me with the paints for the mixed media project that i did on on screen and i've got a feeling that's when i acquired that bottle of paint and of course have i been able to find it since yes but mainly in america so when I go over to the States in September, which is my next visit, I'm going to potentially pick up a couple of bottles and bring it back. It's one of my favourite colours. I do love it. Right. Here you go. Loving this colour combination. Right, down to the last one. And then we can start playing with putting stuff on there. Now, I must remember that um, this is for a box. It's quite a large box. Um, it's going to be about 12 inches long, which is about the depth of my bookshelf shelves. And I think it's going to be about six and a half inches wide by about five and a half inches deep. Um, I'm still designing the box. I'm going to make it from scratch, like make it from panels of card. Um, and I've got a feeling that um, I'm going to need six of these. 
what I am going to do, because I'm looking at this thinking, will I get round to it? I'm going to do one more. No. That will settle down, I know. Though I know there's more in there. I mean, at the end of the day, I'll just take a scalpel and cut around the top. And then what I can do is take, take the paint out with a palette knife. Because I'm not going to waste paint, people. I'm not going to waste paint. So uh, what I'm going to do here, I am in shot for all of this, aren't I? Yes. I suddenly remembered I'm supposed to be looking through the camera and not looking directly at my piece. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create one more background. And we know I've already done the background, so I'm going to create one more background and actually just cover up those white strips down the side. Just, just in case I forget to do it. This way at least I know I've done it. So just by taking these pieces, I can just come in, touch that down, and all of a sudden it's out the way. So if I just do that with a couple of the areas that have got white on them, just for peace of mind, because I can bet you that'll be the one place that I actually need to use, and it'll be the one place without it on. So see, already done that. Get all of these done. Um, I don't normally worry about things like this, but as it's for a specific make for me, I want to make sure that I'm not setting myself up with something to struggle with later because I quite like to get right on to detail next. Let's give this a little bit more paint. And then I think, I think I've got some um, strips that are ATC wide over to one side. I might pull one of those and then I pick up the excess on there. There you go, that's that one done. Then we cover this one up. So hopefully you're all doing well, guys. Um, it's, I think, well, what day is it? I don't even know what day it is. I want to say it's the 2nd of March today, which means that here in the UK, um, I think someone said yesterday was the first day of spring, um, although it's another three weeks to the start of the equinox. So. I'm not sure which spring they're talking about, whether it's um, a calendar spring or whether it's it's an old style calendar spring. I don't know. Or whether it's like an almanac. I don't know. But just hearing the word spring brighten my day, I can tell you. I don't mind the cold, but there comes a point when I've had enough of it. Or well, maybe not even the cold, really. I think it's more the wet. I'm going to pick up from the gel plate here. There's a little bit there. Right, that, ooh, that didn't pick up anything. Didn't you pick up something? That bit is just not wanting to pick up anything. There, it's gone. Right, so this is now all six backgrounds. Well, I've got some strips here. As you can see, I clean up on these. Um, these are actually going to end up as ATCs, artist trading cards, for those who are not familiar with that term. And I'm just picking up my spare paint. It wouldn't bother me if it was still staying on the plate because as you've seen, I'm doing everything on the same theme anyway. So if there was any redundant paint here, it would just get picked up. So, and these, I basically build and build and build until there's enough on them for me to go, right, let's, let's cut them into two and a half by three and a half inches, which are the dimensions for ATCs. And I take it from there. Right, so I've got spice, spicy oranges and stuff down there. Let's clear my roll off a little bit. Right, what do I want next? Um, let's go in and put some dots in the background. Actually, dots yet? Yeah, let's put some dots in, right? So I've got, there's a five by seven, there's an eight by 10, and there's a nine by 12. Those are the sizes of these. I think I'm going to go straight to the 9 by 12. I won't use these today, I don't think, but they're all the same design. They're just different scale. And I think I'm going to come in and I'm going to brayer through some paint onto here and then pick those dots up. So I think I want to come in with something a bit terracotta-ish. Oh, terracotta, there you go. The first one I picked up. Just want a bit of terracotta colour down and let's have a look at them. 
yeah it's enough orange on those so I'm just going to come in and pop some paint down so I'm using this as a stencil it's not being used as a mask and I'm literally just putting stuff down so I can then come in and pick up sections of this just randomly as you can see I've not gone over the borders I'm just going to lift this off here very quickly and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to kiss this down onto the paint and as you can see I'm picking up sections now, if I put this one down completely and give it a good bray, uh, a rub with my hand I'll probably pull off quite a bit as well Let's stick a bit across there See, I'm not worried that it's absolutely perfect. In art, for me, nothing is going to be absolutely perfect. Right, let's put that back down again. Not planning to line them up, but as you can see, it was quite easy to line them up with what's already down there. And I think I'm just going to put a bit more of this on there for the other two. I might need some more paint, to be honest with you. See, it doesn't take long to create a 12 by 12. Um, on a plate this size but you don't need to have a plate this size you could quite easily have a smaller plate and just work on sections of a 12 by 12 so any of those of you who think oh I really need a plate I really need a big plate actually you don't need a big plate I use a big plate because I use big plates all the time most of the stuff I do is going to be made into art journal covers um, I cut these up and make them into ephemera and tags and stuff. So you don't always need to have a 12 by 12 um, because you know, these, these are not, not the cheapest thing in the world to purchase. However, saying that, I think the value in purchasing the big one for me is, is a game changer. I do have um, a considerable amount of plates in different sizes because I, I do a lot of gel printing. I would say if you're just beginning out um, on your gel plating journey, I would say get a 5x7. You can do a lot with a 5x7. In fact, you can do a huge amount with a 5x7. And once you find out that maybe you love that size, then look at what you actually do as an art form. Like I've always used lots of um, 12x12 cardstock. So for me, it was a no brainer it was, I needed a 12 by 12 plate. But that's me, that's not everybody. So pull this back in again. As I said, I'm not fixating on lining it up. I'm getting it close, but that's about it. Ooh, it's starting to stick and ripple. I'm beginning to press too hard. That's my fault, not the stencils. I'm getting a bit excited and carried away. So. Yeah. Obviously you'll see them all at the end. I'm just going to pick up anything that's left on there, which is pretty much nothing. Let's pop in and put this back down and see whether there's any paint left on here that could brayer across it. Now I've, I've probably overestimated how many backgrounds I need anyway. I, I think I need six, but I was trying to calculate doing both the inside and the outside of the box. So I don't mind that being lighter, that's okay. Now, I could lay this down somewhere and wipe through it, but I don't really want to spend that time doing that. So I'm just going to clean my, my mat off. Let's put a bit of tissue paper in. I'm not sure I'm going to pick up everything, as I said, I don't mind if bits and pieces stay down. That doesn't bother me. Just take off the majority of that. Or else everything I put on here is suddenly going to be terracotta. So, right, so we've done the dots. Let's put the dots out of my way so I don't put anything on top. You don't want to put two, um, two sticky surfaces together or believe me, you're going to be in a whole world of trouble. Right, um, Ray was clean. Do I want to wipe that off? Um, yes, I do actually. I'm going to go for white. Right, I'm just using a damp cloth and that's purely because I don't use wet wipes. 
unless a wet wipe is the perfect thing for the job. Um, I have found that as a bit of a money saving exercise, um, I buy two of these face cloths a year from my dollar store and they cost me one, one pound here in Britain will buy me two of them and I, I use that f them for a year. I put them into my laundry probably about once every other week with my laundry and they wash up. They're always stained. I mean this this was a clean one today. Um, they're always stained but stain doesn't bother me. Just wipe the brayer off as well while I'm talking. Um, and I, I reckon I probably save quite a chunk of money on wet wipes or wet ones throughout the year. Also I'm doing a little bit for the planet. I'm not I'm not creating wet ones. Some would argue you're using detergent, but I'm using detergent for my laundry anyway, so I don't mind about that. Right, we've done the terracotta. Now, I want to come in with a lighter colour again, just to make sure things are not getting too dark. So I'm literally going to go as light as I can, and I'm going to put some white on this plate, and I'm going to do the kissing technique you've seen me do umpteen times before. Basically, where I just touch the paper down in areas and then that will give me some interesting parts. So this is where we're at with this one so I'm literally just touching it down in a few places just to get stuff going. And after I've done this we might just take a look at them to see where we're at with them. So you can all see what I'm doing. Right, that's cool. I need a little more paint on here now. I don't normally work um, to get, oh, it's quite a bit of paint. Um, I don't normally work to try and make them look similar. If anything, when I'm working on a gel plate, I'm usually aiming to get each of my backgrounds or creations to look different than the other one. So it's a bit unusual for me to work like this. Um, but it's it's nice. I know I can't make it all exactly the same and I'm okay with that. As I said, I just want them in a the theme. I really am hoping I'm going to be able to do the box video. Because if I can do it, then you can all follow through and see, see how it all worked out. Looking around, this one looks like it needs a bit of a helping hand. And I think... This one could do with a touch more as well. Right. So let me just roll my brayer off and then I'll show you where we're up to at the moment and then we'll go on to the next stage. So this is the first one. Well, they're in no particular order. That's one of them. That's another one of them. Another one of them. Another... This one's a bit paler than the others. Doesn't bother me, gives me variety. And this is the other one. So as you can see, we're all getting there on the theme. Now I think at this point, maybe the leaf, the little leaves, the this one. As you can see, I've used it quite often. So it's one of my favorites and it was my favorite when I drew it. Um, I think I'm gonna do the smallest one, the five by seven, purely because it just gives me smaller detail. So now the question is do I go with green and I think I want to go with green to be honest with you. Um, I really do think I want to go with green. It's a case of what colour green though. I don't want something that overpowers. So this is just a bottle that I put my empties into. Or the, It's actually not a bad colour. Let's see if I can do something with that. Right, again, I'm going to use this to, as a stencil. Oh, I'm not going to use it if it looks like that. I need to really give this a good shake up. I do have a few older paints and I keep discovering them. Like I've lost track of which are the older ones. So I do tend to try not to use paints that's too old. This will be okay. Um, let's run right over the top of this. Now, I'm not looking for absolutely defined anything. 
I'm looking at the texture visually that this will give me. So if I lift this up, see it'll give me a little bit of visual texture and I'm going to be quite specific about lifting things up. I just want to put it into areas of this. And I don't mind if the other areas come in because I've got the green above, I've got the green carried through. I think I'm going to do that again. Again, I'm not being that picky about where I'm laying the stencil down. As long as it's in the correct area, I'm okay with that. Now, I will mention, by the way, these are made of Yupo. Um, it's 100% polypropylene, I think the word is. Um, the, the stencils are made from, from PM Artist Studio. I like them pretty much for one reason, because I can see them when I've got them on the work surface, because they're white. Um, they are quite robust, but as with any stencil, if you abuse it, you'll lose it. Uh, I mean, I've, I've not yet destroyed one of the Yupo ones, um, but then I've, I've become very aware in my use of using stencils as to how to use them correctly, and that is just to respect them. You can't expect to get this fine of detail um, without there being some vulnerability within the project, sorry, the product you're using. I know that when I use um, the clear plastic ones you sometimes get from other companies, I very often will end up folding it, or one of the things I've done quite often is roll my chair over one because I haven't realized I've dropped it. That's nice. Um, so just with anything, you just need to be aware, guys. Just a little bit aware. You are in shot? Yes, you are in shot. A little bit more of this green. I'm liking this green. This was this was a good choice. I don't know what colour this is, guys, because purely what I do is when I've got one of these bottles and it pretty much gets close to the end, I will then have a green bottle or I'll have a blue bottle or I'll have a yellow bottle. And I just start decanting all of the spare paints into one bottle instead of having a whole pile of um, half empty bottles all over the place I just then go in and I'll I'll all add them to one um, granted you end up with some pretty unique mixes not good for the YouTube community who then ask me what what the color is because I'm like oh, I don't know um, but I'm sure I'll be forgiven for that. It's just for me, it's a way of um, saving space because the way I try to work, um, and I mean by not overstocking myself or hoarding paints is I only allocate myself a certain amount of storage for paint. So if I've got six bottles and they've only got a little bit in each, then obviously I could condense those into one and then buy five new paints. So just the way my brain works, let's put it that way. Just the way my brain works. Right, we're down to the last one. And then I think I want to look at putting another something in. Not sure what, but I'm going to put this to one side so it's out of harm's way. So that it doesn't get damaged because I like my stencils. Well, I should do. I designed them. They're mine. Although they are all available and I will put a link to them all on the PM Artist Studio website. Um, it's on my website as well, but if you go to my website and click the link, it'll take you to yours any, uh, theirs anyway. Because I don't manufacture or sell them, PM Artist Studio do. Right, just get this braid on there a little bit. Just so I can use some of these strips to, if there's anything that can be picked up, I'll pick it up. I doubt whether much is going to pick up. Yeah, because this paint is pretty much dry. I've abused it. So, there you go. Um, the other reason, by the way, I'm using a 250 GSM cardstock for this project um, is that the layer of card which covers the box itself will then in itself create more strength through integrity in the box and 
I'm planning to make um, a box storage for my signatures and my journal covers uh, because I'm finding I currently keep them in a drawer and the big trouble is they're getting damaged and I don't look at them. I just look at the one on the top. I don't look at the others underneath. So, right, got that down there. Oh, that took some finding. There you go, pale yellow. Now, I know that the moment I roll this out on here, it will take on a green hue as it will there. But what I want to do this time is I want to come in and I want to stamp some sort of design on it instead. So I've got this ice cube tray again from the dollar store. Um, it's got a silicone base to it. And I found that these really give interesting, almost like suction marks. Oh, that's a pity, isn't it? Suction marks um, through when you stamp with it. Obviously, the bottom of that needs sorting as well. I'll just wipe the excess off. It'll be fine. Normally, I don't mind because if I'm doing something grungy, then that's OK with me. But I'd rather it didn't flake all over the place like that because then I'm not really controlling it, am I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put paint on here, the small 5x7. As you know, I'll use it as a palette. Then I will lift off and press down. So I'm going to slide the plate up. And I'm going to do these by pulling them in individually. So if I lay that down there, let's put some paint down there. Now I know that I've got six to do, so I can put a reasonable amount of paint on my plate. This is kind of is it a semi-transparent. No, it's actually an opaque. I thought it was a transparent. So I just come in, lift off, touch down. And see, it'll give me some really interesting areas. Now what I'm doing now, is I'm kind of trying to be a little random with my placement of these because I don't want it to become the dominant feature. Let's bring in this one. Also, I have a habit of starting in the top left hand corner. One of my subscribers pointed that out to me, not aware that I did it. Um, so I try now to turn my work around so that I am coming in from various different angles. This is going to look really pretty, I think. So down. Let's give us a lovely layer of paint. To do for that one. Now, I will at some point, and I did that one intentionally, I knew I was starting up there, um, because that area needed it. Um, I will at some point have to add some drama to these, whether it's with dark brown, whether it's red, or whether it's black, not sure which. How am I doing for time? Okay, we're not doing too bad for time. I was a little worried that the length of this video would be quite excessive. Um, but I think I might be able to get this done in the hour. That's my intent anyway. A little bit there. Now, I would say for me personally, these are looking really busy. But the reason I want them busy is because we're not going to see them as a whole. You might see this much of it, or you might see that strip there. So when you're creating something, always try to bear in mind, if you're doing it for a specific project, think about the end project. Purely because you just kind of need to. Right, let's just use up the remainder of this paint and get some dots onto these things. Then we can have a bit of a clean up here then. Now, I could be doing an extra 12 by 12. I could just have a clean up 12 by 12 here, or I could easily have been doing arty postcards, even card toppers, anything like that. So just know that I could be using the same process for a clean up in any other way. Right, I think I'm going to come in and actually lift some of this off here just to give myself a bit of variety. Uh, you won't see these um, ATC's Artist Trading Cards finished. Uh, it's not my intent. They are just 
something that I'm doing on the side, just basically to save myself paint. Right, so I think these have gone far enough. I'm going to move those out of the way now. Up over there, hopefully they don't stick together. Right, you're done. Um, that was Pale Lemon, by the way, by New Windsor & Newton. Sorry, I just realised I've not told you what a single colour paint is. Um, however, I would also say, when you're creating, create with what you've got. Um, Utilise what you feel suits the project you're doing. As I said, I was inspired by Darcy. And go across to Darcy's channel please do me a favor my subscribers go over and show her some love she's wonderfully funny lovely creative lady um just just a lovely lady and i love what she's doing and her channel has just gone past a thousand subscribers and i'd like her channel to grow i i well i like everybody's channel to grow to be honest but i i like darcy darcy a lot she's a good friend and i'd like to see her channel grow so pop over there guys Show us some love. It would be much appreciated by me as well as her. So I think I'm going to pull one of these in so we can actually make some decisions now. Right, so this is kind of where we're at. Oh, that bit is there. Probably a bit of paint off that silicon ice cube tray. OK, I'm liking where I'm at with that. I do think I want to make sure that I keep pushing stuff into the background, into the background, into the background, um, because I don't want things that are so in your face. Now, I do want to use the newest, which is Cascading Cubes, because I love this one. Um, I used to have a previous version of this that I hand cut, and um, my subscribers, well, you are my subscribers, asked whether I'd get PM Artist Studio to make it because there wasn't one from me, and I went, we can do that. So we've done this. Right, most things on here are reasonably large. And I'm thinking I'd like to go small again, to be honest with you. Right, so let's let's go with the five by seven, because at this point I'm just sort of adding detail. So let's pop that over there. But do I want to do anything first? And in fact, what do I want to do this with? No. Got quite a lot of orange on here. I'm probably going to add black for drama. I wonder whether I want to. Sorry, having a slightly indecisive moment here. I think I want to come in white, but not on this. So let's just not use this. I want a bit more heavy bodied white. So I'm going to use this one. And I think what I'm going to do, where have I put it? One of my favourite bits of kit, an old piece of corrugated cardboard from packaging. Right, put a reasonable layer of this down and then I'm going to pick up lines and I want lines going in one direction only. I don't, I don't want them going crosswise, I just want them in one direction. What I will do is choose areas like this that are a bit blocky. By blocky I mean they have a dominant patch of colour which I've now just covered up. There's another bit up by there and because I'm me I'm going to do it in three places. Right now this is going to take a little bit of time to dry but it's got time to dry. Now it will be interesting when I do cover the boxes whether I manage to keep the orientation of these lines true to themselves. I doubt it. I will get so, get so carried away with covering the boxes because it's a process I enjoy that I will be surprised if I remember that I'm supposed to look at this. So when you see the final project, which I do need a bit up there, whether it's, it's in a video or I share a photograph of it on my social media, look out for that. You can see whether I remember or not. See, this one's nice, but that's, that's just a clump and this is just too orange. I mean, I love the orange, don't get me wrong, but I want to break it up a bit. So, so I learned this trick for creating lines with corrugated cardboard from Gail Agustinelli. And Gail has a wonderful way of doing this. What Gail tends to do is, if she's got a blank piece of coffee dyed paper on the back of a journal card or 
in a journal, she will use this with ink to actually create lines on the page for people to journal on. Absolutely genius, I say. Ooh, that definitely needs a strip down it. Um, so, and I just took that idea and adapted it to this. I mean, I do use the same idea in my journals. Absolutely. If it's a good idea, it's a good idea. But I just love what this does because it just gives irregularity. And it gives, you'll see that these aren't, these, I've used a higher body, a thicker body paint, because it gives you a real texture that you can run your fingers over. Make sure you don't run your fingers over them till they dry though. That would just be a bit silly, even for me. I need a little bit more, I've got a ton of paint here. That's not bad though, I don't mind that. I might mix up a different color. Okay, I'm really liking where these are going. Well, I should hope I like where it's going anyway, because if I don't like the papers, I'm not going to like what I put them on. I just want to go this way on this one. They'll still be vertical. I'll just turn the page around. It's just that I saw all of that and just knew that it had to be covered. Right. I think I want to put some orange in and I think I'm going to make orange. Now, I did a, a project with these um, Stamperia paints a little while ago and, and they didn't work for me on their own on the gel plate. However, they do work if you mix them with other paints. Um, it's just that they dry really, really quickly. They're almost like a chalk paint, um, which is good because I like chalk paints, but I couldn't work with them very well. so. Basically, that's why that's why they don't get seen very often. Right. Gonna come in um, inside of a tape roll. Let's just put some circles down. Now, you're probably going, Kerry, we can't see those. Um, you may not see them now, but I can see them here. I mean, they're in there. You can just see them. But I like to create art that you have to look into. I like things that make the observer look at your piece of art and wonder, why is that there? Why is that there? I mean, when I go to visit art galleries and museums, and I do that. I mean, I love visiting art galleries and museums. Um, I'm going to be in Chicago in September, and I'm really looking forward to it because I've convinced my friends that we need to go to the museums there. I think they're basically just putting up with me because normally it's a case of we're going to the beach, we're going swimming, we're going canoeing. But I'm like, can we go to an art gallery, please? And they're like, Kerry, we're going for a picnic, we're going on to the beach. So I don't always win, but this time they promised me that I can go to an art gallery. So I'm very, very excited about that. I haven't been to a museum or an art gallery in Chicago in forever, and I do love them. So I'll try and take some pictures and share on my social media. Right. Sorry guys, I know this seems like a repetitive process, but if I was to share the end results with you, and I hadn't shown you how I did it, I can guarantee certain subscribers would be giving me flack, going, well I wouldn't have been bored, I could have just sat with a cup of coffee. So hopefully you're just sat with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of wine, if that's what you want to do, and you're just enjoying the layering process I'm creating here. That would be nice. Right, I've just got two more to do, and then I want to introduce my um, cascading cubes. And then we'll look at the very final touches, which I've got an idea of what I want to do as a final touch. Because I really do, I love this colour combination, and I love what I'm creating here but I do want it to be a bit of knock your socks off drama at the end of the day, because it wouldn't be me if it wasn't. I right, see, and I believe, was this the pale one? Well, that's probably a good thing. The one that I thought was too pale, I've kind of lost in the mix with the others now, so that's a good thing to say that um, we've done our job. 
Right, and this, as I said, was just, I think this was the inside of a cash register roll, or might even have been, a, would it have been duct tape? There's nothing written in the inside, I don't know, these duct tape though. Um, but yeah, so just the inside of a roll, I keep them, I've got them in so many different sizes, because whenever I see them, I just collect them. Right, so that's the last one of those. Right, I do need to do a bit of clean up over here because I don't want this paint going on anything else. Let's do a clean. So there you go. So it's absolutely beautiful weather here today. Believe it or not, I've got two lines of washing out. Yeah, I know, good old domesticated Kerry. But you know what? I wear clothes and I need to do laundry. So domesticated Kerry lives here. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, I went out today, earlier on, down to, we have Hobbycraft here in the States. I think it's pretty much the same company. You've got Hobby Lobby, we've got Hobbycraft. Uh, probably a slight variation in product ranges, um, but the same sort of concept. So um, they sent me a £5 loyalty voucher this morning um, because... It's the first week of March and I think they're doing some sort of promotion like make it March or something. And so obviously they're trying to generate revenue and get people to go in and actually purchase stuff. So and I, I was looking for some stuff anyway. I went, you know what? Five pound. I'm going in. And I went down there. They had a big sale on Christmas stuff. So I bought some Christmas stockings for next year. I bought some nice boxes that were ridiculously reduced. They were a pound and they were like seven pound at the beginning of Christmas. So, so I stocked up on a few essentials. But after I, I used my fiver, I still only spent about 15 pounds, which for me in, in hobby, hobby craft is, is amazing. Right, where are we up to? Right. I think I would like to introduce a little bit of brown. So the question is, what sort of brown? I'd like the brown to look like brown, not terracotta. Ooh, or should we go with the metallic? No, let's go with the brown. I'm feeling a brown. Well, I've got this sort of chocolatey brown. It looks like it's got black in here as well. So, ooh, it's, it's, a, it's a heck of a mess, that one. That's had umpteen things added to it. What colour does it come out at, though? I know this is going to look a little bit wasteful. Excuse my shoulder. I just want to squeeze some of this out and see what it actually looks like. Okay, that's not bad. I, I will use that. I will use that colour. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bray the paint on here, lay the stencil over the top of it, and then, then pull the plate, um, pull the paint through it. So, and I'm doing it that way because it will give me squares that are not exactly perfect because the paper may not go all the way through it. So I'm just going to, ooh, a bit of a wobbly moment. I'm going to come in. I don't mind if I get some of these edge pieces as well, but as you can see, I'm just getting splatters of it. I think that's, oh, maybe just a little bit there. I just want dots of colour. Why well, I say colour. Yes, brown is a colour, isn't it? Let's just fold that back. Add another layer of this. This is very, very old paint, this brown. I can tell just by the texture of it. But that's fine. I'm not going to waste it. If it looks like it's beginning to go past its cell by date, should we say, I'll just make a load of backgrounds. That's okay. I'm looking at these thinking that I need to put some red into them, which was so not my intent. But I'm wondering whether they need a little kick of red. There's a lot going on on these pages, but as I said, it doesn't bother me purely because we're not going to see a whole 12 by 12. We're only going to see, at most, a five inch panel of it, or maybe a five and a half inch panel of it. I 
Um, this size is great, by the way, if you're doing things like smaller projects, because you can obviously put texture paste through these stencils. Um, I would say if you're going to use a texture paste through any stencil, not just a UPO stencil, any stencil or a mask, make sure that you clean it immediately. After you finish, put it in a bowl of water. If you can't clean it, put it in a bowl of water. I say that because otherwise it will set like cement and you'll damage your stencil trying to get it clean again. And that would be whether it's UPO or any other sort of medium the stencil's made of. But I'm liking that now. Well, I liked it before, so it's not just now. Right, I am going to lay this on this sheet just to clean the back off a bit. Yeah, as you can see, it creates some interesting stuff on tissue paper, and I'll use this for um, collage anyway. And put that down there and let that think about itself for a moment or two, just so I get this out of the way so I don't tread on it. And then I definitely need to clean this plate off. Just give it a bit of a wipe over. Oh, there you go, you never know when I'm gonna need brown again. Right, just using a damp cloth. Now, um, I have been asked, how do I condition my gel plates? And how often? Okay, um, I would say I gel plate probably three times a week, okay? And then about once a month, I will pull out the gel plates I've been using that month and I will clean them. Um, one of the things I'll do is I will use packaging tape to lift off any residue around the edges. Um, just an example like this around the edge because that's where your paper will catch and tear. And then I will massage some either food grade mineral oil or baby oil into the surface. I usually then go away for about, well, length of a cup of tea. And then I come back and then I use kitchen towel, which for me is this stuff, roll the kitchen towel, and I'll wipe off the excess and then I'll store them in between two sheets of paper and I store them in a plastic box. Um, that's the way I do it. I do know some companies say you don't need to. I find I get better results if I take care of my plates. And I've had this plate for years. Um, actually, looking at the colour of this one, this must be one of my originals as well. Um, I do I do use my plates a lot. I do take care of them. I, I've got a number of plates and if I haven't used a plate in a while, I will still go in and condition it just, just so it doesn't dry out. And that's just my personal view. I know that some other people disagree and go, oh no, you don't need to do that. Well, I feel I do. And judging by the results I can get, I think I personally have made the right decision in doing that. Right. And just put this over to one side a second. Right, this is where we're currently at. I mean, we've got them all looking very similar. This is the one that's quite pale, but then this one's looking quite pale as well. And I've got these. Now I'm considering um, putting red onto these, but then I'm thinking, do I, no, because it, it needs a kick of something. I'm going to put some black on here as well. A bit of a kick of red. What have I got? Country red. I think country red is going to work. And we're going to do the country red. This is a Pringle lid. You know those chips, crisps, whatever you call them. And I've cut this little flap so I can pick it up and down. And it gives me a really fine line. So yes, I'm going to put red on here. But I'm not going to put red on here in big thick lines. I'm just going to put it on a little bit of a thin line to add a, add a bit of colour to this. So... Do I say it's country red or Tuscan red? T country red, I think this is. So, now remembering these are not going to be kept as, yes, that's what I needed, as one whole piece. I can put it in several areas. See, that's just, just enough to bring that back to life. Well, back to life, to help it out.
and no method to my madness I'm just putting it down I'm kind of wondering whether I need to do another layer of the kissing technique with a pale colour before I put the final black piece on. I'm not sure that I do. So I'm beginning to doubt myself a little bit here. It happens. I will work through it. My gut instinct is definitely telling me to potentially knock this back a little bit. And it might be a sound idea. Because although I'm not going to see individual 12 by 12s on mass on the piece, what I am going to see is all of the design on mass on the boxes. On the box, sorry. So maybe. Maybe I do need to knock this back. And I want to knock it back because the final colour I'm going to put on here is black. Just, just because. Just because I can. Tissue on there. I have to clean this surface again. No matter how much I clean this surface, it's progressively getting more and more stained. It's a stonework surface. It's a piece of, well, it's it's a stone cutting board basically, and I love it, but I can no longer get it clean. And I've tried every cleaning thing I can to get it clean. It just doesn't, it doesn't clean anymore. Um, it's just stained. So, and I I can't use bleach. Bleach just it makes me ill. It just the smell of bleach is just just. It just makes me gag. I'm sorry if that offends anyone, but I just I can't be around bleach. It just it's a smell I cannot I cannot handle. Right, so I think if I'm gonna do a light colour, is it white or is it a cream or is it a pale yellow? I think if I do it white, because I know the liquid white will give me quite a transparent colour. A transparent coverage I think that's probably more of what I need let's pop you back in and shot again we're shot again let's go back to this liquid the teaser I call it liquid it's just a, a thinner consistency and this one also feels like it's running out oh that means I can buy paint at some point so I'm gonna try and run my supplies down a bit so I've got an excuse to shop when I'm in America and it's not that I can't shop in my own country. It's just always fun when you go to another country because you have stuff I don't have or can't access. And a lot of the time it's stuff you're all showing on the internet and I can't get it. I'm just gonna come in and do a bit of that kissing stuff. Just to, yes, that's kind of what I was looking for. See, just to take the punch out of that, I will obviously be adding bits a bit more punch into this afterwards but yes I'm glad I did this I'm glad I put this extra colour on uh, pretty much because I want to add black and if I add black over ooh, that was a bit too much um, if I add black directly over all of that brown and that would look too dark I'm leaving rings on here because obviously the red is still wet. Right, just a little bit more on here because I've got two more to go. And then we're going to be on the final stage. As I said, black is going to be the very last thing I add um, and then we'll be finished. I'm happy about that. This is, I can't, what is it? It's about just over an hour long. And when you reckon I talked for probably five minutes at the beginning, um, I think we're doing okay. I'm 
Right, just because there's interesting stuff there, I'm going to put some of these down just to see whether I could lift that red off. Not that I have to put red on here, but why waste it? And there you go, that gave me little bits of interest. I'm okay with that, that's fun. See, that's quite nice. I mean, once those are cut into three and a half inch pieces, it gives me the good opportunity then to keep building on it. Right, I'll give this a good clean afterwards, but I just want to make sure that I get the majority of the paint off it now, so that it doesn't start to crust on the edges. Because there's nothing worse than having edges that are all crusted in. Right, we are done with big gel plate. The little gel plate is going to be used for black. And I don't, oh, I do mind that. I don't want it grey. I want it black, black. So, what am I going to do with the black? First of all, this needs to go in the laundry. Um, first of all, I'm going to get black. Right, we're using Mars Black. And we're going to use one of my favourite bits of kit, which is this plastic mesh, which you've seen me use upteen times before. Um, I bought it in my local hobby store. It's, it's a throwback to a time when um, people used to make this to use this to make three dimensional um, pieces. So, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kleenex boxes. Um, hold alls for stuff. I think I've even seen things like handbags made out of it. So, so that's what I'm going to be pressing in. Now, don't want this to be massively dominant, but I do want it in certain areas. See, it just, I love this stuff. And that's enough for that one. I'm trying to keep it vertical and horizontal. I don't want it on an angle. Um, for some reason, it visually doesn't work for me when I do these on an angle. I don't really like diagonals and stuff. Now, I would always say, if you're into gel printing, Always look at packaging. Always look at the stuff that your deliveries come in. And I mean, look at things car parts come in and furniture. Um, white goods for your kitchen. Clothing even, that sometimes you'll find interesting packaging with clothing. Paint's beginning to dry up and I don't really want to add more paint, but I may just have to in a moment. Well, I've got two more to go, and I don't think there's much. Well, there might be enough on the brayer. It's the trouble with the black. The black is the one paint. Well, actually, it's a lie. Black and metallics are the paints that dry out the most for me. Bit of a smudge. There you go. That's going to be grunge then. Quickly shove that up there. Get the very last one and see if I can get anything out of this 5x7. Yes, I can. I'm not going to use more paint. I'm just going to use what's on here. Hopefully I'm not jiggling you around too much. Right. So that's now spent. Let's give this a little bit of a wipe just to make sure it doesn't clog up the holes. Okay. I think we are done. Um, made a heck of a mess, but that's not really a problem because it's gel printing. That's what I do. I do wish I'd have more in the middle of there. Let me just get one more load off here. Come on, pl please, Mr. Paint God. 
that's enough I can live with that so right let's pull everything in so you can have a look at it and then we're done so let's remember I was planning to create a collection of backgrounds to cover a box project which I'm hoping I'll be able to share with you and I wanted them to all look as if they're in the same family um, not necessarily identical so we start with the same color same design same textures and this is what we produced so this is number one this has to go that way because of the lines that's number two number three Number four, could I possibly have put them in a more awkward of an order? Number five. And number six. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Um, how long did it take me? Um, just over an hour. That's not bad going for six backgrounds. Okay, I need to go and wash my hands. But until next time, guys, I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. And I'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.